Hey guys, today is day 19 of the 25 days of thriftness. If you haven't been to my channel before, I'm Sonnet, the owner and creator behind Sonnet's Garden Blooms, and I want to welcome you all. Now in today's video, I am taking, I was going to take just five items and flip them for my studio. I'm actually taking six items. So six items that I'm going to be using in the decor of my studio and I am flipping them today. So I hope you enjoy today's video and I can't wait to hear what you guys think. For project one, I found several of these plates while out thrifting. And this one I was going to keep for myself. And again, if you remember from a couple videos ago, I, as I was going through and organizing, I realized I had an extra set of the Christmas Valley. And I loved what I did with that plate um, that I actually put in one of my booths that I wanted to create one for myself, for my studio. So I'm going going through Christmas Valley's IOD um, transfer and I'm trying to find exactly what I wanted. I decided to go with a chickadee and the reason I did is because I do have this really cool stained glass piece that I thrifted a while ago and it has a chickadee on it so I thought it would tie in with that whole chickadee theme even though you guys know I love cardinals. So I'm cutting out a chickadee and some greens and I'm going to create the plate that I did on one of my past videos and I'm going to just do that for myself. So I lay it all out, figure out where I want the transfers and then I just start applying them. If you haven't worked with transfers before, they are super easy and you can apply them to virtually everything. Uh, once I am done applying the transfer, I do always seal my transfers. And so I'm just applying one even coat of Big Top to the entire piece. Actually, on this one, I think I did apply two coats of the Big Top just to really seal it. For project two, I had a viewer put on a uh, comment on my last video with the table and chairs that if I had a lazy Susan, I should repurpose that round piece that I had cut out and put it on a lazy Susan. So I thought, how appropriate. I do have a lazy Susan here uh, in my studio that I plan on using to use with my projects. I always would put a piece of scrap paper over it, but I thought I can make my little lazy Susan be pretty. So I am going ahead painting it white swan. I'm painting the entire piece uh, on the top and bottom and two coats and then we we are going to start applying the decoupage paper from Roy Cycled. Now I have shown this before, but applying decoupage paper is super easy. The key here is line up your paper where you want it and then work in sections. And I think the a lot of times what people do will just lay down all the decoupage medium and then plop on the paper and it just creates a ton of wrinkles. By doing it this way where you're working in sections, it really creates the perfect piece. So I I always use liquid patina with the recycled paper. It just is such a perfect medium for the paper. And then, like I said, I work in sections. So I start on the bottom. I lay down a really nice, even layer of the liquid patina, smooth it out, and then I continue to work my way up. Now, I do want to give you guys all a teaser. I, I know I've mentioned it before, but the new spring Roy Cycled papers will be getting to my home very soon. I'm just waiting for it and then we'll get the go ahead from Royce to start. Um, she's going to kick them off and I know you guys are going to absolutely love them. So um, for the 25 days of Thriftmas, I do have one of the prizes being one of each of the Roy Cycled papers, the spring ones. 
Now that it's completely dry, this is the easiest way to get rid of the excess paper is I just take a piece of uh, sandpaper and in a downward motion, I rub along the edge and the paper just comes right off and then I seal it one more time and your project will then be complete. I am so excited that a viewer gave me this suggestion. I've had this lying around for a while, so thank you. For my third project, I picked this up thrifting. It was originally from Hobby Lobby and I ended up finding it for $5.99 at Goodwill. I loved it. I did not, I was debating whether or not to leave the yellow so I never hung it up. And in the end, what we're going to do today is I did create a custom DIY paint color. I believe I mixed Old 57 and Aviary to get this color. I'm remixing it up. Uh, I made quite a big batch of it and I painted a bunch of items. So I'm just remixing it up and then we're gonna paint uh, this piece. I painted it like a full coat and then I did like a halfsy. So like wherever it needed, where it was showing a little bit of the yellow still, I just kind of touched up here and there. And then we're going to seal it and add some dark wax. So I did seal it with Big Top and then now I'm coming back in with the DIY dark wax. And this is so easy. Um, the reason I sealed it first, uh, anytime I'm using the dark wax, the black wax, or the white wax, I seal my piece with either Big Top or I use the clear wax and then apply the darker or the um, colored waxes. It makes it so much easier to um, manipulate and it prevents it from getting too dark or too white. Uh, and then that way you can go in with the clear wax and remove um, excess if you need to, if it looks too dark in an area. Uh, it just it really helps you um, work with it a lot easier. So I apply just a really nice even coat of it and then I'm coming back with a piece of paper towel and I am going to wipe off any excess and that is the finished product and I am so excited. It totally goes with my de decor in my studio and I cannot wait to show you what it looks like. I found these a while ago at a consignment shop and I just loved them. I liked the rope. I was not too keen on the color though. So these have been sitting in my studio for a while. I've been trying to figure out exactly what I wanted to do with them. Now when I'm put under pressure having to finish this whole studio project, I right away knew that I was going to um, add pops of white throughout my studio. So I'm painting it this white swan. I'm going to apply two coats of paint and then I am going to distress it back and bring some of that dark goodness out from the white swan. So here I'm just taking a damp rag and I have shown this before, but it is one of the easiest ways to distress the DIY paint without causing a lot of dust with your sand, like a hand sander or sandpaper. Just take a damp rag and rub wherever you want the area to be distressed. And I did it randomly all over the piece. I just wanted it to show some of that darkness uh, through that white swan. 
After I get done doing this, I do let it dry and then I do apply one even coat of Big Top to seal the whole piece and then we're going to add the ropes back on. So here are the ropes and basically I just tried to squeeze them as tight on the ends and fed them right back through and it really wasn't that hard. I was a little worried that the whole rope would unravel but it actually went very smoothly. On my last trip to the Goodwill bins, I found this little plate and I loved it. I liked all the detail of it. So what I decided to do with this is I am going to paint the entire piece old school. I'm going to apply one even coat to the entire piece. I'll seal it with Big Top, let that dry very thoroughly. And then I'm just going to apply the White Swan and bring that uh, darkness out and it's really going to make all the detail of this plate really pop and I think that's what was lacking it was so ornate and beautiful but it just kind of like all blended together and you could not see how beautiful the plate really was now that it's sealed everything's dry like I said we're going to come in with a white swan and just give it a real nice even coat I did apply two coats of white swan to the entire piece now we're doing the wet distressing again and this is so I love it when I'm wet distressing and I'm bringing back all the details of an item it's very satisfying so I did have to rinse out the rig one time uh, your rig does get full of the white swan paint so you may have to rinse it in between and then completely finish the whole piece For my sixth and final piece today, I am upcycling this tackle box. I really think I picked it up at the bins. What I, the reason I was holding on to it for myself was I loved the texture on the tackle box. And I just knew I've always wanted to include it in my studio or in my decor somehow. So I'm taking aviary and I am applying two even coats of aviary to the entire piece. I'm going to let that dry very thoroughly and then we're going to come back and we are going to bring out some of that detail. Um, what do you guys think about upcycling tackle boxes or vintage boxes? I have done it a couple times and they go over so well. I just think that they're so cute um, you know, as shelf sitters or you can actually use them to store items in because the tackle box actually has a ton of little compartments inside. So now that I have it all distressed, I am going to go ahead and seal it with Big Top. And again, I just apply a real nice even coat to the entire piece. And then I'm going to let that dry very thoroughly because what I want to do to it is I want to add some transfers. And I love the Whispering Willows transfer from IOD. And I am going to pick a few of those and we are going to add those to this tackle box. 
So I have been eyeing up this little porcupine for a while. I was trying to figure out how to use him. I decided to put him right on the front. I thought he is super cute and I thought he would be a great addition uh, to my studio. I also love to go mushroom picking and I think it's so cool that this set has just a ton of fun little mushrooms in it. So I added a few of those to the other side. I plan on putting this up on a shelf a little bit higher so I decided not to add any of the transfers to the the top. I definitely could have added something also if I wanted to, but I just thought these two were the perfect addition to this little tackle box. Well, I can't wait to hear what you guys think. Now, I did take um, a viewer's advice and I used that round piece of decoupage paper and I put it on uh, Lazy Susan. So that what, thank you to whoever wrote that in the comments. I appreciate it. I definitely took your advice and I cannot wait to actually, I've been working diligently like organizing and cleaning and I have not realized that my studio was kind of being a catch me all. So my life has been like crazy busy. And as I'm performing my lives in here, doing my videos, I would bring stuff out. Oh my gosh, it was just, it was a collection of all kinds of stuff. So I've been bringing stuff in the house, organizing. Um, I do have an area in my home that I keep a lot of my crafts as well or like a lot of my supplies. And so I've been organizing that. So this was a really good thing that I'm doing this reveal. The other thing too is I do, the, it is heated out here, but I always do worry if the electricity would go out, would everything freeze? So anything that um, is like a liquid form, I have decided I am taking that and I'm bringing it in the home, my home so that that way, if something were to happen over the winter, I don't lose everything. So I had a lot of my supplies in my cabinets and over winter, I just made that decision that as I'm working on different projects out here, I will just bring what I need, bring it back, um, a little bit more work in the winter, but uh, it's really for my own protection. So day 20 coming up, um, I cannot believe I'm saying that day 20, who would have thought we would have been here guys so um i have i if i get the reveal all ready for you tomorrow i'm gonna do that otherwise i have a little bit of a fun video um for you as well so you guys have a great evening and we'll see you again tomorrow bye